Hello, this is Janie with PuppyLovesMe.net. Today we're going to read The Berenstain Bears Trouble with Pets. So sit back and get comfy and let's begin. Cubs don't expect the big job they will get when they jump up and down and beg for a pet. Goodbye, little bird, said Sister Bear. Fly away and be happy. On her finger was the sparrow that the bear family had taken in because it had an injured leg. Papa Bear had made a splint for it out of toothpick and strips of tape. Brother and sister had named it Tweety and had taken care of it for about a week. But now it was time to remove the splint and let the bird go back to nature where it belonged. It hopped into a twig, and then it took wing. Before you could say Tweety, it was out of sight. I'm going to miss our little bird, said Sister sadly. Tweety was such a nice little pet. Tweety wasn't a pet, dear, said Mama Bear. Not a real pet, anyway. It was an injured bird, and we helped it get well so it could go back to the forest. Why don't we get a real pet, Mama? asked Sister. Other cubs have pets, said Brother. Why can't we? Cousin Fred, Freddy has a dog. Lizzie Bruin has a cat. Too Tall Grizzly has a snake. Well, said Mama, as they climbed the front steps of the treehouse, I suppose it's something to think about. Gee, Mama, said Brother, what's there to think about? There's quite a lot to think about, she said. A pet is a big responsibility. A pet has to be fed, cared for, kept clean. What do you think, Papa? I think a dog would be nice, said Papa. But a dog is an especially big responsibility, said Mama. A dog needs shots. It needs to be trained and walked, and there are dog, lo dog laws. A big dog, said Papa, about so high that it can go play fetch and play frisbee. We'll take care of it, Mama, cried the cubs. We promise, we promise. Remember now, said Mama, as they piled into the car, we're going to the pet shop just to look. Choosing a pet, especially a dog, is a serious business. Speaking of dogs, said Papa, point to a sign as they drove by Farmer Ben's place. Puppies available. See Farmer Ben, said Brother reading the sign aloud. How about that? Ben's dog, Bess, must have had pups. May we look at them, Mama? cried Sister. Oh, please, Mama, please. Before Mama could answer, Papa said, no harm in looking, and pulled into Farmer Ben's driveway. Ben's dog, Bess, had indeed had pups. Five of the cutest, roly poliest little balls of fur you've ever seen. Farmer Ben picked one up and put it in Sister's arms. What a beautiful brown eye, she said. May we have this one, please? Mama, may we, may we, please? Most pups have brown eyes, said Mutt Ben. But I do think that this one is the pick of the litter. It's yours, if you like it. A gift from Bess and me. Goodness, said Mama. That's very generous of you, Ben. But I really don't know what to say. Yes, say yes, shouted the cubs, jumping up and down. It sure is a cute little thing, she said. All right, then. Yes. Brother and sister were overjoyed. Thank you, thank you, Farmer Ben, they shouted. Then, after they had calmed down a bit, brother said, Hmm, our pet's going to need a name. How about King or Prince or maybe Duke? Farmer Ben, who was an expert in such matters, took a quick look under the pup's tail and said, The only trouble with those names, brother and bear, is that this pup is a girl. Of course, they couldn't take their new pet home with them. It would need its mother's milk for a couple more weeks. But there was plenty of puppy talk as they headed home. Talk about names. Talk about where the puppy would sleep. Talk about who would take care of it. 
Remember now, said Mama, you've promised to take care of the new pup, to feed and water it, and to clean up after it when it has accidents. What kind of accidents? asked Sister. We'll discuss that later, said Mama. Brother and Sister couldn't believe how lucky they'd been. A new puppy for their very own. That night before falling asleep, they thought about some of the wonderful things they would do with their new pet. Sister thought about dressing it in doll's clothes and pushing it in her carriage. She thought about introducing it to her stuffed animals. Perhaps they could have a tea party. Brother's thoughts were quite different. He thought about winning the blue ribbon at the Bear Country Dog Show. He thought about how fine it would be to shout mush as his great dog pulled him through the deep snow. But of course, a puppy isn't to be dressed in doll's clothes. It's a living creature with a mind and nature of its own. It would be a long time before the pup could complete for blue ribbons. It would even be a longer time before it could pull anything through the snow. There was no question about it. Brother and sister had a lot to learn about puppies. So Mama and decide, Papa decided that a trip to the library was in order. They took out a book called Puppy Care. When the big day came, the Bear family had a puppy care plan all worked out. First, they stopped off at the police station to get her registered. What's the little lady's name? asked Officer Margaret. The pup would need a license with her name and address on it in case she got lost. But brother and sister still hadn't agreed on a name. What do we do? It seems to me that Officer Margaret just named her pup, said Mama. Little lady sounds like an excellent name to me. So the puppy left the police station with a name as well as a license. Next, a quick stop at the pet shop for a puppy harness and a leash, and then a very important stop at the vet's for a checkup and shots. Little lady didn't like the shots one bit. Brother and sister knew just how she felt. They even sort of knew how parents must feel when their cubs have to get a shot. Now it was time to introduce her to her new home. The bears had already gotten food for her and had made a puppy box out of a cardboard carton and an old blanket. They had placed the box in the kitchen where it was nice and warm when the door closed, of course. Puppies to be, tend to get into mischief and there wasn't much harm she could do in the kitchen. That lady sniffed all around the kitchen and then curled up in her box and went to sleep. At first, the cubs argued about whose turn it was to feed, water, and walk the pet. It's my turn, no, it's my turn. But after a while, they began to argue about whose turn it wasn't. It's your turn. I cleaned up after the last accident. No, it's your turn. I cleaned up after the last accident. So Mama solved that problem by posting a puppy care schedule on the wall. Now, not that the puppy was all work and no fun. Indeed, little lady was a lot of fun. In fact, it was so much fun watching her that the Bear family didn't watch much TV anymore. She did somersaults, she fought her rubber dog bone, and she got into the strangest positions. Also, of course, she grew and grew. She grew so much that the Bear family started calling her Lady instead of Little Lady. Lady, and all like all puppies, she loved to chew. Uh-oh. Then one day, somebody forgot to close the kitchen door while the family went shopping. When they got back, they found that little lady had chewed up half the living room. What a mess. The time had come for lady to have her own house out in the yard. Papa built a fine, sturdy dog house. Then he chicken-wired the fence to keep her safely in the yard. Lady loved her house. She was even more fun in the yard than she was in the house. She chased leaves in the fall, snowflakes in the winter, cherry blossoms in the spring, and butterflies in the summer. 
As the years went by, Lady became more than a pet. She became another member of the family to love and enjoy. The end. Have a great day. Until next time.